Hey guys, I'm Joshua Valentin, and I have heard a lot recently that you cannot edit or color your weddings in DaVinci Resolve 12. Uh, and I think that's a load of hogwash. I came from Premiere and Final Cut, and I much prefer DaVinci. It's a lot faster, um, it's a lot more fun to color your stuff, and it, uh, it produces a lot better images. Um, I was watching Craig Adams' video on how to color a wedding, and it took him about 46 minutes to kind of get through the whole process, and it was a shorter wedding. Um, he said it was uh, much more simple, and he did a simple grade on it all. So I think that it's a little bit more time-consuming to, uh, to grade in DaVinci, but it's definitely worth it, and it's not so much so that you would hate it. Um, so let's jump in. So we're going to jump in and see how long it takes us to grade these few clips that are either flat, pretty like close to log, just low contrast, not log, and then a super over contrast, somebody just wasn't shooting very well with it and we're gonna try and fix it going in we're gonna go to the first clip which is a very simple easy and cheap camera the Sony any x5r it's about a hundred bucks on eBay and it's not an amazing camera but it is uh, it gets some good images um, the first thing I like to do is set up four nodes which these just adjust the one before them super simple um, and I like to edit as if I'm editing in Lightroom that's where I started and that's where I like to go back to um, we got our parades and all of our scopes, which is way better than anything in the world. I love them. Um, and we're going to start with our, uh, I think it's our parade, yeah. Um, and we're going to pull down the highlights to get the white balance. The white balance is how balanced these colors are. So as you can see, it's a little bit shifty. They look okay. But um, I might come over to the second side, mess with the temperature. Cooler. A little less green. Looks a little better. And I'm going to click on the dress. I'm going to unlink this. And you see how these are not balanced. I'm going to take the blues up. Take the reds down. Do it again. Reds. Greens. Awesome. So let's pull our highlights back up. See? Fixes all of the... This just looks yellow. This looks really nice and balanced. I'm going to come over to our next adjustment layer. And we're going to pull up the highlights to where we would like them to be. Mess with it. Pull down our shadows. And mess with our midtones. Awesome. Looks really nice. I, I think it looks a little bit too saturated, though. So we're going to pull down the side a little bit. We might have to pull down this and check the white balance again. It looks kind of wonky. Uh, it looks OK. I like it. Um, then on our third adjustment layer, we're going to jump in and hit the hue saturation, uh, hue for hue, excuse me, um, tab and kind of mess with that. We want the skin tones to be right. So how I do that really easy, zoom in, take my parades to the vector scopes, and you can see the hue of the skin tones is a little bit off. I'm going to mess with that, with the yellow and the red, because that's where skin falls in the purple. Um, it's mainly red though. So I like that. It's on the line now. It's perfect. So we're going to zoom back out. Boom. Come back. Mess with all the other colors. And I don't think there's really much to mess with. But you just mess with this as you like to kind of shift colors around to make it look more pleasing to the eye. Um, I'm going to do all of the saturation. This is a hue for saturation. So pull down the skin tones a little bit. Maybe boost some other stuff, maybe a little bit more in the yellow so I get those background colors. And I like that. Uh, it's just very simple edit. Almost looks like it's a little bit green. So come over to here to the hue. And I will almost pull it up a little bit. There we go. Uh, and then this final one, I'll do a tiny little bit of a grade. Boom. Just a little bit of warmth. And maybe I'll add a little bit of cinematic cooling. Because you know everything's cool when you're cinematic. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, really simple grade. Just gives it a nice contrasty feel. If you like less contrast, sometimes I'll go in here. I'll go to my contrast thing and I'll pull up the pull up the flat, and it makes it look almost like film because it flattens out the blacks. Um, but honest, all in all, I think this is way better than where it started, um, and it was really easy and simple simple to do. We have this really fun clip, and it's pretty much going to be the same process. This is an A6000 on a Sony 50mm 1.8. A little bit overexposed, but all in all a really nice clip. Um, and this was before 
the update for the 15 megabits per second, so it's going to be even better. So for a camera that's selling for $300 on eBay, it's a great B cam to say the A6300 or even the A7S. Um, so I would I would recommend it as a B cam, not as an A or an A cam if you don't have the money. That's totally fine. Uh, we'll do the same process. We'll kind of balance them out. I'm going to pull them down here. We'll just look at the scopes, or the parade, down in the bottom right hand. If you've been looking off in the uh, the lovely little people the whole time, that's okay. Um, looks a little bit better. We're gonna we're gonna just keep that where it's at. Nice. And with this one, it's really desaturated. It's not log, but it's really desaturated. So I'm gonna pull up the sat. Not too much. You know, maybe give it a little bit of color boost. And I like to pull the midtone detail up. It just makes them pop a little bit. Maybe to 30. Um, and then the, the, the blah, 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 blah. yeah. And in the second adjustment layer, we're gonna pull up the highlights, pull down the shadows. Really simple, same thing. Almost looks like there's a bit of problem there. I don't want to do it too much. So let's pull this up here. Gives it a little bit of contrast, nice and pretty. Maybe I'll do that fade again, not too much, because I don't want it to lose detail. That's nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Get our hue versus hue. Get a nice little pinky feel there. Might be kind of nice. You can do a lot of different things. You don't want to go too fancy. There's a blue dress. You can hue that a little bit if you want. Not too different. Just more pleasing. And we get the sat. You get really into it and it becomes really easy after a while. Kind of mess with it. And uh, do it to your liking. And that's that's pretty good. And then finally, I'm going to add the grade midtones, which is the gamma. I'm going to pull a little bit orange. Maybe pull down the midtones a little bit. And that's good. So it's really super easy and simple to grade in this. Honestly, that took no time at all. And it looks really pleasing. So this is the before, the after, before, the after. It's great stuff. Here we got our other A6300 clip. It's another clip from that wedding. Really pretty shot, but the white balance seems to be kind of mixed because you have the moon outside and all these sparklers on the inside. So it kind of like had trouble with the auto white balance adjusting for this. That's why I say don't use auto white balance. Um, and on the clip we have uh, the dress and I think if we try and adjust the temperature on it, it's probably not gonna do what I want it to. So no, we're just gonna click on the dress. We're gonna do what we've been doing for white balance. We're going to pull down the reds, pull up the greens, pull up the blues. Do it again. Reds, blues. Looks pretty good for the most part. I think that's good. So, looks good. And then before, after, before, after. It looks a little bit green, so we might shift the hue, but I like it, it looks good. So now we can do a little bit of saturation adding, do a little bit of color boost action, and we look pretty good. So before, after, just a little bit of a minor adjustment. Then we're gonna go into the curves adjustment, make sure it's all locked so we don't get a bleachy feel. Um, we're gonna pull down the lows, pull up the highs, mess with it, keep an eye on our parades, because if we go too crazy, I like the all of these little lines that are overclipping are these lights here, and I like the fact that they're overclipping because it looks kind of fun. It looks kind of cinematic-y. I'm going to mess with these midtones. I'm going to go here, do the hue versus hue. I'm just going to mess with it. I'm not going to go too in-depth with it. Go for the hue versus satin. This is where I think a big thing will happen because this dress I want to be white. It's yellow, so I'm going to pull down the dress. I pull up the red tones a little bit. I'm going to pull up the greens. Maybe pull up those blues as well. And uh, that looks pretty good. And before and after, before and after, super minor, not a big deal. Um, pull up the warmth because I want it to be warm. Give it some cooling, not too much because that's not the look I'm going for. Um, and uh, I think it looks pretty good. It's a fun shot, and this is the before and the after. Okay, and then we got this final clip from the Canon 5D Mark III. Um, 
it's ridiculously like wonky on the exposure and the contrast. It was a, a friend of mine that just had been given it and he had no idea how to use it, but he wanted to try. And I was like, okay. Um, and I'm going to try and fix this up. So we're going to start off by pulling up the blacks and pulling down the whites. And the first thing you notice, I'm not a big Canon fan, but this 5D Mark III is doing an amazing job of holding all the detail as I pull it up. So that looks awesome. So we're going to pull this down to the line. We're going to mess with the temperature and the tint. So we're going to pull this like that. Okay, and we're going to do the white balance on the dress. Oop. Mock. Pull up. Maybe a little less green, I feel like. A little more purple. Not too much. Okay, before and after already. That looks way better. So we're going to go to the second adjustment layer, and we're going to adjust the contrast. I'm going to pull up the whites, pull down the blacks. Not too much. Mess with the midtones. Like that. So there's a nice little adjustment there. I'm going to go to the hue. You see how all the colors are just very weird and distracting in this? I want to make them simple to a specific grid that I would do. So we're going to mess with this. Maybe maybe make the skins a little bit more pink. I like the, the pink in it. I'm going to mess with this, all these colors. Uh, I'm not too pink. I don't want them to look purple. Okay, and then I'm going to mess with all the other colors. Um, I want this to be almost blue. Magenta's to be blue as well. And then we're going to go to the saturation. Pop, 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 pop. I'm going to pull down this a little bit. Pull down this a little bit. I'm going to pull down the blues. And um, for the most part, that looks pretty good. I might put in a little bit of cinematic -y teal and orange. Because, no, no, not too much. Um, because why not? There you go. It's a nice little grade. It saved the image and it looks kind of cinematic -y because that's a word. Cinematic. -y. And if you want to be fancy, you can put the crop lines on it because who doesn't like some crop? So this is the before, the after, before, the after. It's great stuff. So yeah, it's a great coloring software. I think it's perfect for weddings. It's not a huge learning curve like everybody's been saying. It's really simple. You're going to get some awesome images out of whatever camera you're using. So I think it's a great option for new wedding filmmakers, for people switching over from Premiere and Final Cut. I don't think that you're going to have too many issues and most of the issues that you have there's great workarounds for. Um, if you like the video, like it. If you dislike the video, dislike it. Uh, leave some comments on some things that you didn't like about it. I'd love that. And um, if you want to see more content like this, share it and subscribe and I'd, um, I'd love to make some more.